wanted to talk to you about, Amy, when it comes to social media and keeping dentists safe and making them aware is what is your um, advice when it comes to like passwords, um, two-factor authentication, logins for social media and things like that? Uh, there's a lot to unpackage <laughs> in that, that topic. Um, so let's start with passwords. Uh, if it's your business account, uh, you need to have more than one person listed as uh, as people that can access your account. It shouldn't just be an office manager. It should be you and an office manager and maybe a social media company. And, and you need multiple people to have access, administrator level access. That means being able to override other people. So if you're office manager or a dental assistant or hygienist or whoever's handling social media in the office, if they leave under unfavorable terms, you still have access to your account and, uh, you know, Rita, I actually has sent you a, a client that that happened to where they yes. get into it and it, it ended up being a huge deal. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of happening a lot right now, unfortunately, a lot of practices coming to us saying we can't get into our account. We don't know who has um, access to it anymore. And it's really sad because those are a business assets, right? The social media. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as passwords, I am a huge supporter of password managers and, uh, you know, passwords like one login or last pass or anything your IT provider might have to give you. Uh, they're all huge benefits to your practice because it will auto log in. And then that way your team doesn't need to know what the password is. So if you have someone that leaves your organization, then you don't have to reset all of those passwords or try to figure out who got access to what it's all just taken care of. Um, some of them even have the ability to uh, reset your password for you and make them more secure. And, and those are, are great too. It's, it's a huge resource. Um, but the rule with passwords is uh, eight to 12 characters. So the longer, the better. Uh, it doesn't even have to be super complicated anymore. It used to be that a great password looked like you pounded your fist on the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> and now if it's something like, I hate Amy, HIPAA sucks, the sky is blue. And I've had, I actually had someone say Amy sucks as their password. And oh my like, gosh. You're I mean, right. I would rather that said I hate HIPAA, but <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, passwords are one of those things that you want it to be something that is long and takes a long time for a password cracker uh, to access it. So the longer it is, the better it is. Um, the things we want to shy away from are the things we're all guilty of using. Uh, kids, significant others, pets' names, your office phone number, your street address. Uh, those are things that everyone uses. And, yeah. um, and those are the things we shouldn't use because they're easy to guess. Yeah, it's so important. And I think, um, remind me again, remind everyone, like, where's the best place for them to get in touch with you if they're like, I need to talk to Amy about getting these password, um, you know, options and some of these different systems in place. Yeah, so my website is best. There's actually a contact form on there. It's copperpennyconsulting.com. Okay. And um, yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward to get in touch with me. Um, my assistant, Alicia, is also a former office manager in a dental office. So she's been on both sides of this. She knows what it's like to uh, have to actually do it versus having to teach other people how to do it. Yeah. Yeah, so I hope that you all will have that as a big takeaway, your passwords. Know that um, I think Facebook and Instagram have pretty much strong-armed everyone into that two-factor authentic authentication, whether you wanted to or not. They just kind of locked some people out that hadn't gotten on board with that yet. But I do want to stress and say you need to make sure that you have, as a best practice, at least two administrators connected to your accounts, as what I recommend. Hopefully, one of them is the doctor. And know that you need to have ownership, that these are assets, because we've had a couple, we had just had someone recently, and they had two different pages that they were unaware of. They had a couple of hundred followers on each of those accounts and um, an Instagram account that was floating out there. And it's not always easy to get in touch with, you know, Facebook to reclaim ownership of those accounts. And it, people have um, like and follow fatigue these days, so it's not easy 
to build up a couple of hundred loyal patients as followers as it was even a few years ago. So that's become even more valuable from that perspective. So um, thank you, Amy, for just reiterating the importance of, you know, making sure that you have a good password and that you know where the passwords are. And I love the tip about getting some sort of a password manager because we've got team members that are leaving and new people coming on board and it's kind of a hot mess right now. Yeah. And multi-factor authentication, it is very quickly becoming the new standard. Um, we're even starting to see dental insurance carriers that are requiring really? multi-factor authentication to log in. So it's, I mean, get used to it. If, if it's important to you, set it up. Mm -hmm. And then, so should they have some kind of a two-factor authentication, um, a, like a password manager? Is there some sort of a two-factor authentication like there's manager several. or tool? Yeah, there's several. Um, some are better than others, and some are just automatically built in by the vendor that you work with. Um, there's companies like Duo and Microsoft, uh, Google. There's there's a bunch of them that are out there right now. Um, a lot of the places like insurance carriers and, and Facebook and places like that, they have their own authentication where it will either email you a code or text you a code. And for an office, I would say absolutely use the email option uh, because you don't want that multi-factor code being sent to an employee's cell phone because that that's the path of least resistance and that's what someone will set up. Okay. Oh my gosh, so much to remember. I think, um, yeah, there's, there's a world. lot more. I'm coming up with all these other questions and I'm like, that's for another conversation. <laughs>